on America's Got Talent absolutely changed the trajectory of our career, to say mm -hmm. the least. I mean, after I feel like we spent an entire lifetime dreaming and then in a matter of like months after that show we had to we had to come up with a whole new bucket list I yeah mean hey everyone welcome back to beyond the bar podcast i'm your host anisa tova and today we are diving into the world of country music with these incredible incredible women dynamic trio known as chapel heart we have danica hart devin hart and tree swindle with us these ladies are straight up crushing it. They're breaking barriers. They're breaking the status quo. I'm loving it. But today we will go beyond their fame and music titles. We'll explore their journey. And um, I'm just, just so thrilled for them to share their story. Ladies, let's dive in and welcome to the show. Hi. Hey. Thank you for having us. Totally. I, I've, been, I've been looking forward to it. I mean, you have such amazing amazing energy and um so i'm so i'm curious so many fans were introduced to you during the america's got talent uh so so let's talk about the golden buzzer moment so imagine you're on stage you just received the golden buzzer on america's got talent so describe that moment what was that like absolutely mind blown because prior to us going out production had already told us look there's no golden buzzers we're at the end of the day y'all are one of the last performances just go out there and give it what you got and just try to get three yeses so we had no idea we didn't even know that the group golden buzzer was a thing and so when all of this happened we were so confused we were nervous. We were like, what is happening? We were watching the, the judges kind of just huddle up and we're like, what is happening right now? The crowds and, chanting so yeah, loud. There, there, was, there was so much going on in that moment and we were, we were pretty confused. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you, you, you didn't look confused to me, but you, you, you looked you, disbelief. You're absolutely right. It was like, disbelief I, I actually, is a better word. I had goosebumps. I had goosebumps, you know, my, my daughter, she's 24. And, and I said, you have to, you know, these ladies are coming on my show. You have to watch it. She's, she's actually in Colorado. She's like, okay, mom. Okay, sure. And then she texts me, she goes, damn, wow. That was incredible. Like you could feel it. You just, you feel it. Yeah. You, you feel your music. And then that moment, um, how, how did it, how did it impact your career? Um, going on America's Got Talent absolutely changed the trajectory of our career, to mm -hmm. say the least. I mean, after I feel like we spent an entire lifetime dreaming and then in a matter of like months after that show, we had to we had to come up with a whole new bucket list. I yeah. mean, <laughs> after the show was over two days later, we made our Grand Ole Opry debut. And I feel like since then, like we've like expanded our fan base to like a global fan base didn't realize that the yeah. uk loved us that much we're actually getting ready to go back but um and it also just made me realize that country music isn't like relegated to a specific locale it's not just the south and it's not just the u.s it's like people from all over and it let us know that you know three girls from a small town in mississippi we write songs that people around the world can relate to Wow. This is this is really incredible. You know, I, I I'm here's what I'm interested in. Everybody has a story. So let's go back mm -hmm. before the show and, and get to your story. Tell me about how how did your family roots, your family how how did that shape your music? How did you get from there to here? Oh, well, um, well, we come from a huge family. Our grandmother had 17 kids. There's 108 of us. And, oh and um, <laughs> it's a it's a very it. large family. <laughs> and I realized we say that and then we just keep going and most people need a second to like take it in. But, it. <laughs> yeah, there, there, were, there were quite a few of us and our grandfather was a preacher. Their dad's a preacher. And so, you know, we grew up in church and I feel like everybody sang. And anytime the family got together for like a birthday party, graduation, wedding, a divorce party, 
at some point people are going to start singing and what is it you always say about like how early we start yeah look i said i, I used to make a joke and said depending on when you were born and the doctor slapped you on the butt whatever whatever key you cry and that's where they put you in in the choir <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's too funny <laughs> you know what you did you say 17 your grandma had 17 kids uh -huh. my grandma had 18 actually no, my grandma not my great not my grandma my great grandma my actually grandma on my mom's side was was 18. um and so when you first said it i'm going hey here's a kindred spirit i mean i, I don't know how, how women did it differently back in the day i i there you go there you go and yeah, but, you know, wow. But being a part of, I love that. I love that being a part of, like, I think growing up in a big family um, is probably a lot of where we got our like resilience from and like the, the you get knocked down and you get back up. And, um, you know, and I always say we grew up playing, like we would play football and baseball and basketball with our cousins, but they didn't, they didn't have a girls team and a boys team. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to play football, you got up there, you played football. And if you caught the ball, you had tackles coming your way. It wasn't flag football. <laughs> or any of that but it just taught us to be tough and you know we never had a our, our grand, grandparents never had a lot of money so it was always um we we had to use our imagination a good bit so yes, you know indeed. you might have played baseball but you might have had paper plates for bases and then maybe a broomstick for the bat and you know and so it was always learning to be creative and and um, really just play in the hand that you're dealt. You know, it may not, if some some people would look at it and go, man, that's not a good hand, you're gonna lose. But, you know, it's the hand that you got, so you gotta work with it. And so I think that that's really, growing up in a big family really kind of set us up a little bit for being in the music industry and kind of how tough it is, uh, I think as a start, so. Keep preaching. I mean, I, I am just I like, so and, and, <laughs> you know, I came to this country from another country when I was a teenager by myself. And I remember I didn't know the language. I was like 16. I didn't know anybody. Um, I was homeless briefly, but I remember walking into, I think it was Southern Baptist church. I didn't understand. I didn't understand the language. I heard the gospel music and I felt safe. It filled me up yeah. and I felt everything was possible at that time. So you don't need the words. You just, you, you can, you can connect through music and and that's incredible. So I I can I understand the humble humble. It's like in a way what you're describing is you you may have had the paper plates and 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 a makeshift stuff, but that I'm not sensing that you were struggling because of it. I'm sensing there was a lot of the connection, having a large mm -hmm. family. It it gave you that great foundation. I feel actually, I feel like it's the exact opposite. You know, there might have been a lack of material things, but I think what, what made up for it, like you say, it's the connection that we have with each other, our ability to connect with other people. Or whenever things don't go your way or plans change and everything's ruined, it's like, I feel like sometimes lack breeds innovation. And we were some of the most innovative kids you could have ever come Amen. across growing up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. Well, tell me, tell me a, a story from a childhood. What would be an example of, of being creative? So we used to, we didn't have like a whole lot of bikes, like in like in Hearts Chapel. And that's actually where we got our band name from the community that our family lives in yeah. is called um, Hearts Chapel. And we well, used to- just a, I just want to preface what she's going to say. Our grandfather was a mechanic. And so people would always bring him like scraps of things and lawnmowers and vehicles and, and, and buggies from stores. And so this is where the story kind of leads off at. So they, okay. our grandparents absolutely, and parents did not have enough money to buy all of us bikes. So, if, so if it had wheels, we figured out a made to a way to make it roll. And like, I, I just remember us being like a kid, like maybe like twenty or twenty five kids, like all like wheeling carts and pushing buggies and pulling pulling wagons and all to get to the top of this hill on the third pole. And then you just go downhill. There's no steering. There's no brakes. There's just gravity and faith. But it was some of the best fun you will ever. <laughs> Literally, have. we had the time of our lives. Kids rolling the ditches and the the buggies are going all off but we it was just it was like the it was like oh the God. original redneck downhill derby yeah. and <laughs> in derby 
<laughs> and uh, it was just like, it, it, but those okay. were literally, but you couldn't tell us that it was not the most fun. And, but, it, it, and I know that it was fun because people always say Sunday morning, I mean, Sunday evenings after church, it's usually when everybody would come down to our grandmother and grandfather's house. And it was all the kids, all the, the uh, aunts and uncles, everybody would just come and fellowship there. But when you would go to pick teams to see who was going to be on teams for what, you would look around and see kids and be like, and who are you? Like, where did you come from? People would just drop their kids off. And they were like, I feel like they were like, somebody's going to watch them. Somebody got to watch all these kids. They can watch mine too. And they come back and pick them up at the end of the day. But it's just, it's just, it was, it was how we grew up. And I think it's our love. That's why we love our fans and love people so much. And, uh, you know, and there's people who are like, man, y'all just put it all out there. Like, we just, we are who we are. Like when you meet us, what you see is what you get. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? And I love that part. I've been, I've been interviewing a few artists and the, the only time they were able to make a true breakthrough and connection with their fans is when they became authentic and aware of who they are. They didn't write music or perform for anybody else, but themselves and they became vulnerable. And, and I sense that this is so incredible. Wow. And you're just getting started. So wait a second. So how did you get from from there? And then how? When was your first performance? I mean, wh how did you get to actually? You know, you were obviously uh, that this this is what you do right now, uh, and so you appeared on the show. So how did you leap forward? Um, what was well, the it was, it moment? Because it started. Well, um, Danica and I we actually started out singing on the street in New Orleans. We had this battery powered piano. We'd go down to Royal Street and we'd, we'd sing on the street to whoever would stop and listen. But the crazy thing is if people, they stopped and listened and came back and then we eventually started playing in the the bars and then yeah when whatever the i say the cherry on top of the pie whenever dev came along and it, it was kind of like it was like the the magic glue to put it all together and like you said it wasn't until we decided to be authentic because we were a cover band for years uh -huh. and we were like well if we're ever gonna like take a leap and actually become like artists we have to like sing our original music and sing the songs that mean yeah. the most to us and and, and like I said, and when we started writing and we started writing these songs, we would write songs about, you know, like, or we, we were, we were writing down our experiences, like brainstorming to write these songs. And we would tell stories and Tree was like, you know, I remember the first standard I learned how to drive was a tractor. And she was like, I got my butt whipped because I, I wasn't supposed to be up there, but I learned how to drive. And then like, we would have, um playhouses or we would all those old cars that our grandpa had those were our our playhouses a lot of kids would get a chance they'd get tree houses they get their parents would make them tree houses and 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 stuff like that and okay, we just Dan we and tree used to have one and guess who they would not let come visit yeah that was it was too young. Yeah, we there were so many kids. We would just bunch into like age wow. groups. Whoever was in the same age group, and she was way too young to be in our beat up uh, old Ford truck uh, <laughs> playhouse. So she didn't make it. But oh. <laughs> now look at y'all want to hang out with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did you get into? How did you evolved into the country genre? Have you always embraced that style? I think we grew up really listening to all genres, but country music was the one genre that we could relate to the most, just based on, you know, our life experiences and where we grew up and how we grew up. Country music was the one genre that kind of just gravitated towards us because it was literally, the songs were our life. And mm -hmm. I think that's just kind of yeah. where it went. And a lot, I know Danica, she always sung growing up and, it didn't matter what genre it was. It always sounded country when she wasn't even <laughs> trying to, to song. So I think it just comes out. And um, also for me, as I got started really young, was that I, was, I, I always tell people, you can't believe, you probably can't believe this, but I used to talk a lot when I was little. And like my mom finally got to the place, she's like, Kevin, you've got to do something. She just, she won't hush. Like, we got to figure it out. And so what my dad was doing, and what my dad would do is after dinner, he would put me in the car and just drive me around the town until I would just knock out. And, um, but when we were driving around, 
he would put on Kenny Rogers and George Jones and John Michael oh, wow. Montgomery and Dolly Parton. And we would just listen at wow. songs and I would just ask all the questions that I could ask. Like, you know, um, I said the other day we were, we were listening to Kenny Rogers and he was saying, Ru uh, Ruby, don't take your love to town. I was like, well, dad, what is this? Like, who is Ruby? And where is Ruby going? And why is she leaving? And, why is she and so, and it was just, I said, we look like two hillbillies just bumping down the road, but that's where I think I really <laughs> fell in love with country music. And I think maybe just our general nosiness definitely added to it because you know country music always has a great story. Mm -hmm. Well, you got to tell about your fancy situation. Oh, I heard fancy for the first time, and I just was like, I was so like drawn in and intrigued, and I went and I told my mama, I was like, Mama, this lady to put her daughter out as she said she made her be a prostitute, and she was like, and Mama's like, who? And what? My, my mama thought it was a real story. Mind you, our mama oh really? Is a oh my god. She's a Worker. She's trying to find out where this woman's sitting. And her daughter daughter got this baby. <laughs> I was like, Mama, on the radio. Oh and she was like, Girl, go go in your room. She was like, What are you talking about? And so, but I just remember being so like intrigued by the story. And um, and we would have I would have talent shows and stuff growing up. And I was always uh, you know, I was always up there singing country music, and people would be like, Wow, that kind of sounded real close to real close to the original and so um you know but it was it was always country music for us and um mm -hmm. and like i said and i always say if we had better sense we probably would have went to nashville before we went to new orleans to try to start a country band because all the players in new orleans were like nobody plays country here what are you so ultimately we settled <laughs> to be a, a cover band but when we started writing and, and writing this music we knew we had to get in the place where country music was thriving and country music was being born and birthed that you know we that we could share these stories with fellow our fellow colleagues who were writing similar stories so which is how we ended up getting over to nashville wow there's so much in here i don't even know where to go first i i am this is this is incredible have you by the way have you met any of your idols like dolly parton Oh yeah. my God! Yes. So well, yeah. recently, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I'm gonna rewind before we get to the Dolly part because that was okay. we've been waiting for a while. But um, I think maybe the first time we met like one of our huge idols, it was it was before AGT. It was like when we were just going like getting into Nashville, going back and forth, and we were leaving a show. And Randy Travis was being wheeled out. And, you know, he ha he doesn't really talk a lot since his stroke. Usually his wife would speak for him. But his assistant was getting ready to um, getting ready to, to get him in the truck. And he was like, well, hey, I want to introduce you to. And he cut him off. And I said, oh, my goodness, Randy Travis just used all the strength he had to tell him, wait, I know who they are. And we all just went, ah, why do you know what Randy oh, Travis is? Wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> We, we got a chance to meet Vince Gill, who was on our, you know, our heroes list. We got to meet Tanya Tucker, Gretchen Wilson, Gretchen Wilson oh. oh, and Darius Rucker, Darius like, Rucker who is wow. really just, you know, it just, we, we've met so many of our idols and they, you know, people always say, don't meet your heroes. They'll let you down. Not ours. And, right. You know, or, or just we're just, hero. <laughs> yeah, yes. said they got, people got to choose better heroes. Uh, but man, all the ones that we have or all the ones that we've met so far have been so kind to us. And, um, you know, and it's like, you know, and, and a lot of times they'll take our phone calls and sometimes we just want to know, okay, so we're, we've we got this decision ahead of us. What do you think? Or will you help us? Or have you been here? What do you, and they talk us through it. Uh, one of our big ones is Billy Gibbons. He has been absolutely, we just, he, I feel like he's adopted us as his nieces and he's our, uh, he's our uncle. And he just, he's like the, he's like the cool uncle that like shows up to the family reunions and he has all the stories about being a rock star and, and life, but also gives you those little uh, wisdom nuggets that you need for day-to-day -day life as well. And he's mm. just, he's the coolest. Wow. You know, you guys are the heroes. I mean, look Aww. where you've made it. Yeah. Look what you're um, doing. I feel like, I feel like you healing this world too. And, and one thing that I had to say also is that I look at you uh dynamic women and there's this closeness and you know a lot of a lot of girls out there they're they're hating on each other i think we need to bring each other up not break each other down how yes. has it always been like has it always been like that growing up or was there a little bit of a rivalry 
Oh, no, no, don't get it twisted. Now, we are very, we're very competitive. Literally, okay. Literally, literally, yesterday we were filming for our uh, Christmas in July um, games, and I I lost Christmas trivia and I left the hotel and I was pissed. ultimately, but I will say, so we're still competitive amongst each other, but we also, excuse push me, I'm so other. sorry. We also, we definitely push each other to be better, but we make a conscious effort to get out and support the, um, our fellow women and country, because even though we fuss and fight, sometimes we know that we need each other and we know that, you know, we've got to be there to help each other get a little further down the road. And um, it's a thing that we watch men do so well in country music. They always just say, as long as the bros are up and that's their motto and they high five and they cheer. And it sometimes seems like when women, when it's time, when it's time for us, it, it, it feels like Oh, there's only room for one so you know and then we'll meet each other and it's kind of snobby and snappy and it's like we got to learn to let that go and um because i always i heard this saying one time and it changed my life changed my perspective forever it says if we're all in the girls group we got to learn to celebrate each other he said uh this guy told me one time he said uh, if you see the mailman delivering mail to your neighbor, you ought to get excited because that means he's in the neighborhood. Yes. Your mail is coming next. And so wow. I was like, we've got to learn to start celebrating each other. And you might have to sit in the crowd this year at the award show and cheer on your fellow sister. But who knows, next year you might be standing up there giving the speech. Uh, and, and you know, it's just like, you know, and even for us, sometimes it gets hard. I don't, I don't want to even say like, you know, sometimes you it's hard to watch people. Sometimes it feels like pass you up. But you got to learn mm -hmm. to check yourself at the door and go, you know what? It's not my year this year, but I'm going to work hard and maybe it's next year or maybe it's the year after or maybe it's the year after. But it um, it, it should it should be the thing that drives you to want to work harder. But um, but I always say there's no need to put each other down, because as long as the mailman's delivering mail in your neighborhood, you got some mail coming. <laughs> I, my hair that I do not have on my arms is standing up. It's just like, I, <laughs> I, I, this is so powerful. Gosh, we need it so freaking much. This is so amazing. Yeah. Wow. What? So let's talk about, do you have any setbacks uh, as you look back? Um, and, and how did you, how did you rise through them? I think we were probably, uh, we still get told no to this day. <laughs> more than that's yes, hard to believe but, that's hard to believe that's hard to believe right it just <laughs> but you know i think we've just learned over the years like you know just because it's a no doesn't mean that it's no it could be a not right now or not yet kind of thing and so it's just been i i feel like it's been such a huge thing for us to just keep pressing the gas and just learning to keep moving forward however we can in whatever capacity that we can because it, it if we would have stopped after the first no or the second no or the third no we would never even got to to where we are today so i think just learning to push through the the the, the hard times yeah. has definitely got us mm -hmm got us this thus far i love that you're right here because tree has a saying tree uh i would say yeah. coin this coin this saying that says we uh we got knocked down a lot but we had mastered the art of turning no's into motivation like you might have said mm -hmm. no but i gotta figure out how to make it happen look we we said that this is what we want to do so maybe you can't be the person to help us so we got to find that motivation and move to somewhere else or like if the front door is locked this house has got eight more doors on it and we and might have to take a side door and if they're all locked it's got windows too there you go so <laughs> and then learning a lot tree can pick a lot there you go so wow. to, the art of learning to turn nose into motivation has really been the thing and sometimes it gets you down because you you just you know just nose aren't fun but um you you make it you make the fun part and turning it turning the nose into motivation and getting creative and and learning to push yourself harder and learning to push yourself to to think outside of the box mm -hmm. if if the front door isn't open let's see what's going let's see if the side door is open let's go to the back door see if the back door is open and um we or sometimes i feel like people are too busy trying to get in and they don't realize that the party's in the yard the whole time yeah and it's kind of like that finding that finding that bliss in where you are yeah yeah that's actually a great point finding the contentment and a joy 
because it isn't a journey. Sometimes you'll get to the destination, you look back and go, oh my gosh, we're here, now what? You know, yeah, have, you, right. have you shared any any of this on, on, on stage? Oh, let's see, I think sometimes sometimes we do. And we, we it just depends on, I think, where we are, uh, when, what, the, what performance it is. But a, a lot of times, like when we were on our Glory Days tour, we wanted to share a lot of the ups and downs. We wanted to be transparent with people. We wanted to tell them, look, not every day is going to be a good day. Some days you're going to have to literally pull yourself out of bed. But I'm telling you, Pull yourself out of bed, put one foot in front of the other, figure out the day as you go. And it's a, maybe the day, maybe the goal for the day is just getting out of bed, combing your hair, uh, go and get you a Holding cup of coffee. Laundry, and it's like, look, I don't even want to get to the laundry. Sometimes, but sometimes just getting up, going outside, sitting on the porch and yeah. going, you know what? I made it outside today. Tomorrow, I'll see if I can do a little more because, you know, we, we talked about during the glory days, people are going through rough stuff. You know what I mean? People are, yeah. we're seeing times that we've never seen before. And, you know, it's, it's hard sometimes, but knowing who to lean on, knowing that sometimes when the, uh, when it, you, sometimes you got to just trust people to be there for you and, you know, for the season that you're in. And, you know, so we do get to share a little bit of these, uh, you know, a little bit of the stuff that we've learned along the way. And, um, you know, we hope, we pray that we just use it, as, that it's used as an inspiration, you know, a tool to inspire others. I always say the best form of the, the best compliment that anybody could ever give is to say that you inspired me because to inspire somebody kind of lights that fire back in you from the inside. It sparks that creativity. And when people say that y'all have inspired me, man, it just, that, that gets my heart up. And I go, look, that, that's one of the highest compliments for me. Wow. What gets under your skin? What's your pet peeve? Ciao. It's probably a list. <laughs> we don't have all night, right? <laughs> oh, so you want to get personal. Yep. No, yep. Or maybe the feeling of my personal feet is Oh, like, your feet yeah, with like, no socks. Yeah, I, but yeah, I can't put on my boots with no socks. That gets under my skin. I feel so weird. Well, one thing that gets under my skin is their ability to talk. <laughs> They talk so much, it doesn't, I, I sometimes can't even fathom how much they talk. Because she she does, does not mean it. It doesn't matter. Danica will talk to, uh, like, it's, it's okay to talk to some strangers, but Danica doesn't just have, like, small talk. She goes into, like, these deep, long conversations with well, you know, I think, I, think, I think we both believe that, you know, strangers are just friends you haven't met yet. Yeah. And you got to <laughs> talk to them to get to know them. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, we probably have, I would say, we there probably are a few things that just, you know, I, I think if we could think hard enough, we probably could make a list. But we're usually pretty easy going. I always say if you can feed us, that's half the battle. Yeah. Not and everything else is negotiable. Okay. <laughs> like, let's get us fed. <laughs> no, I love that. I love that. That we you don't sweat the small stuff. We obviously. try not to look. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so much that goes on in a day, and it's like you learn real quick in this industry just to, choose your, to choose your battles. Lord. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, no, so what's next to you guys? Oh my God, I can't. This is like, it's like a comedy show, except it's a real life. <laughs> it's okay, you know. And, and you know, the best part is. And I say this, that there's nothing pre-rehearsed. We've never met. It just, we sort of like started from the clean slate and it's just yeah. such a great, great energy. We, we're rolling with it. Um, so what's next? What's coming up next for you guys? So right now we are getting ready for our very first Christmas album this year. Ooh, <laughs> nice. so, so we're celebrating Christmas in July. We're having these intimate meet and greets where um, every week we're going to be dropping new information about the album, you know, kind of giving little nuggets and details about the album that oh, yeah. we can announce. So just make sure you're tuned in this month because we are, we're dropping the secrets yes. for sure. And I think that I, I love this. I love this season that we're in because I just know there is absolutely nobody else going around playing Christmas music, wearing Christmas outfits, asking Christmas questions in July, as hot as it is. Yeah. And, but, but it's just, it's us being us in our bubble. And I think that that's the, 
you know, of all the ups and downs that we've had, I think that it it really is how we said it really is our win because, you know, we just we we get to choose the things that like we want to do. And, you know, we just, you know, we we come out of a bit of a rough season for us. So to be able to be in Christmas in July and smile and laugh and get to share these tidbits with our fans and, you know, really kind of where you get to pull your ugly Christmas sweater out the out the closet a little <laughs> earlier this year. Like, you know what I mean? You can wear it twice this year. So um, we're just we're embracing chapel heart in this season and we're embracing you know the way that we love our fans and the way that our fans love us and you know we I always tell people we, even if we never get to superstardom i think that that that's okay as long as we can show up and we can be us and we can touch and 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 let our music can heal and our music can um refresh people and our music can bring people joy um i think you just you got to learn what your life's purpose is and i think that we're we're living in our purpose and and that is enough for us you know what you just shared on this podcast people need to hear more of that that's why i would encourage mm -hmm. you to continue and share your story your music is phenomenal i mean it lends so well and it's just um the energy uh the depth um it's 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 story of its own but the story behind it um and your message it is so powerful it is so incredible it's like every sentence every word yet so authentic you're so transparent mm -hmm. and and sharing people need to hear that um so continue to do that this is I mean, you are, you are already, you are already here. Um, and, um, yeah, this is, this is so powerful. Um, Michael, did you have a, uh, did you have a surprise for us there? Oh, Ooh, day 80. Oh, I'll never forget that day. Oh, ah! Lordy. <laughs> so what, <laughs> what, are, okay. What, what are we seeing here? <laughs> This is us walking out to the audition that absolutely changed our lives. Ooh. Have no idea what to expect. What to expect. We were excited, but you can't tell from this picture that we were absolutely exhausted. This is after rehearsing yes. for three days <laughs> and the end of the last day of filming, but we were just ready to go out and try it. And I mean, I just remember being like so nervous that all I could do was scream. It felt like I can, I can hear this picture all over. Right. <laughs> oh my gosh! What what a what a moment! What a moment! And that's uh, that was just the beginning. Um, so uh, on a final, oh. oh. <laughs> so so this is when we. Oh, go ahead. No, 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 no. Go ahead. I want to hear this. Oh my gosh. Oh. This is whenever we, um, when we came back for Fantasy League. Now, first of all, we were even surprised that they called us because after what? At this point, <laughs> two seasons of AGT and they, um, yeah, the Fantasy League. They, um, they, they chose their top acts from all of the history of AGT. And I mean, you have acrobats, people covered in fire and yeah. training animals and they and chose the fans <laughs> voted for us to come and we were like what oh. we just went so cool <laughs> okay what's ah, this right there? Oh, <laughs> that's what we were signing uh whenever we got the call yeah so they they told us that we would have uh mentors for this season and but they didn't tell us who the mentor would be mm -hmm. and um so we were at the grand Ole opry and Der uh, our manager derek said we you got a phone call ladies and we were like a phone call we at the opry he said we just we need to just tuck away in a room you can take this phone call and we answered it and a lady said um hey chapel heart hang on one second we were like this is weird okay and all of a sudden we heard hello ladies and we were like ah that's the <laughs> wow. so that's the Simon's gonna be your mentor on ATT Fantasy League. Wow. Well what was that like working with him? Oh <laughs> <laughs> he literally is the most amazing person that I've ever met. And he truly <clears throat> knows talent and he knows good music and he knows artistry and he knows and he he knows his stuff so in order like for him to be our our, our mentor was everything and um i always say we got a chance to go to his house he invited us to his home and um i said we walked wow. through after we walked through the second gate we realized that uh we were really poor and uh we're gonna have to 
to write a lot of songs if we want to get on Simon Cowell's <laughs> level. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm dying here. You, you guys are so funny. Um, okay, so on, a, on, a, on a, you will you will be back. I, I know you'll be back. <laughs> so on, on a final. Oh my gosh, you just. <laughs> Um, on a final note, what advice would you give to uh, incoming artists? Maybe something that you had to learn the hard way yourself, something that you wish someone had shared with you. Um, what would you tell them? I'll just kick it off. And I think one thing that was a, a lesson for us to learn is just learning to trust your gut. Like, Mm -hmm. You're going to have a million people coming from a million different directions telling you what you should do, what you shouldn't do, but just learn to trust your gut and then go with it. Just go with it. Trust your gut and go with it. Oh, and like kind of piggybacking off of that, like in trusting your gut, it also comes with finding yourself and being 100% authentic to that because like, I remember like sometimes we go and speak at schools and like Danica always tells the kid like your flex is there is only one of you in the world and the moment that you start being your authentic self the moment that you can lean into who you are that's I feel like that's whenever the world is opened up to you and you never know that your own your individual like experiences and situations can help someone else yeah and um just like to wrap up both of these uh, exactly what Deb was saying and exactly what Tree is saying. But I remember my grandmother saying this. She said, everything that you need for the journey is already in you. And so those moments that it feels like, I don't know, am I making the right decision? You know what the decision is. And even if you make it and you fail, there's a lesson in there. There's a lesson in the failings that's going to, when the next opportunity comes around, you just got to prepare and equip yourself with the things that you already know. So everything you need for your journey, everything you need for your purpose uh, for your purpose driven life as a book my dad used to read everything that you need is already in you so when you know when you say yes and you don't know why you said yes it's already in you when you say no even when the deal looks so good and it's a, it's a million dollar deal it looks so it's so fabulous when there's that thing in you that says no and you walk away and go man did i make the right decision you made the right decision because everything you need for your journey is already inside of you you just got to believe and let it out and you know and like i said we've and we're, we're living proof that there is ups there is downs there's that we had to make a video and say look we can't do the industry we can't play the industry game because we don't have enough money to do that so we're going to do it chapel hearts way and if somebody comes along we're open to sit down and talk about record deals and record labels but until then we're just going to do the things that that make our heart happy and the things that we know you know brings that the that you know the for the, the things that are in us for the mission that we're on and so you know sometimes you just got to make that stance and when the right time comes you just be prepared to show up and, and shine your light wow what a wrap up and it is happening it is unfolding and i believe that it, like you said it's just the timing it's a matter of time and you will know when to say yes and when that opportunity is there yes that's Wow, this has been so powerful. I, 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 it's been such a joy to have you on the show and and really authentically sharing um, your story and your perspective. And really, you ladies are an inspiration. You really, really are. Your positive energy and even like turning the the nose, you know, into an opportunity to grow uh, and 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 making sort of strengthen you. I mean, you really are just amazing testament of re resilience. And I've just so many words I, I can't even find the words i'm like i i mean and that's that that's hard that's hard one to believe so thank you <laughs> thank you so much for sharing Denise, thank you so much for having us yeah, we must do this again yes we got to come back for another girl chat okay <laughs> oh yeah you definitely will and to our listeners and viewers make sure that you follow